Hi, in the previous videos, we talked about naive partitioning method. We talked about Lomuda partition method. In this video, we are going to talk about Hoover's partition method. Hoover's partition method works much better than Lomuda partition method. And like Lomuda partition, this is also big O of one extra space and big O of n time. Also, only one traversal of input array. Let us now understand Hoover's partition. In Lomuda partition, by default, we were considering last element as a pivot. In Lomuda partition, in its typical implementation, we consider first element as a pivot element. So our pivot is first element. So low is here, it's zero, and high is here, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's seven. And our pivot is array of low, which is five. So we need to partition this array around this value of five. All the elements smaller than five should move to the left and all the elements greater than five should move to the right. Greater than or equal to five should be on the right side. Let's see how does this work. We begin two indexes i and j. i begins with l minus one, j begins with h plus one. So i is initially minus one, you know, L minus one means zero minus one. J is initially H plus one. So J is initially eight. We mainly have I here on left of this element and J here on the right of this element, right? J is here. We move I from L minus one to this side. We move J from H plus one to this side. We stop when they cross each other or they meet each other. After every iteration of this outer loop, we ensure this. The elements from L to I are smaller than pivot. And elements from J to H are greater than pivot. That's the idea of this algorithm. So what do you do? You begin from this side. You keep on incrementing while elements are greater than pivot, right? So when you begin with j equal to h plus 1, you will come here and you will see that this element is greater than pivot. So you will move ahead. Now you see this element, you will see this is actually smaller than pivot. So you will stop your j here. And i, you will begin with l minus 1. And you will stop here because this is not smaller than pivot. It's actually pivot itself and not smaller than pivot. So you will stop here. And after stopping, what you will do, you will swap this one with this five, right? So five goes there, one comes here, right? And you continue this way. You come here, then you again increment i, right? Three is actually smaller. So you will go to the next element. Eight is actually greater. So you will stop here, your i. Your J will start from here. It is actually greater. So you will continue. You will come here. You will see this is smaller. So you will stop here. Now what you will do? You will swap these two. 8 and 2. Right? And now you will increment I. This is smaller. So you will continue. Now you will come here and stop. Now what you will do? You will decrement J. You will come here and you will stop because this is smaller. Now you will come to this part because I has crossed J. I and J have crossed each other. So you will simply return J. That's the idea of Hoover's partition algorithm. Let us again take a look at this code and let's run this code step by step with this example. So we initialize I as L minus one and J as S plus one. And before that, we have initialized pivot as array low, right? We'll talk about how to handle the situations where we want any other element as a pivot. We'll talk, also talk about corner cases. So we do this. After that, we have an infinitely running loop. And what do we do inside this loop? We first do i++. We have a do while loop. First we do i++, then we compare it with the pivot. 
so i begins with i uh, you know l minus 1 so it's going to increment for sure in the first go because after incrementing we do comparison so this do while is actually useful in the coming steps also we'll see in this example same thing we do for j we have a do while loop we first do j minus minus then we check right so i stops at an element where your array i is greater than or equal to pivot right so in the first go it stops at 5 itself and j stops at an element when your array j is smaller than or equal to pivot so in the first go j does not stop here it stops here right after doing these two loops we check have they crossed each other while moving forward if they have crossed each other we simply return j if they have not crossed each other then we swap i and j array i and array j right so we have initialize here i is minus 1 l minus 1 and j is 8 because your h is 7 now what we do we increment i first right and then we check for this condition so i stops here itself and same thing we do j for j here j stops here because this element is smaller now what do we do we swap these two elements array i and array j right when you swap your one comes here and five goes here so we have swapped these two elements right i and j have stopped here and after swapping they change their positions and we again begin this loop after swapping we again begin from here and this is where do while is useful you know you increment i before checking the condition because currently i is you know at an element which is greater than or equal to pivot right so you increment i and then you check right so you come here you check right it's a smaller so you continue then you come here and then you check it's greater so you stop right so you stop here at this time now you begin with j right so what do you do you come here you see it is greater so you do not stop you come here you see this is smaller so you stop right so you have stopped at this point this is a stop this has stopped now you come here and you check whether they have crossed each other or not they have not crossed each other so you come here and you swap these two so your two comes here and eight comes here now you move forward i again you begin the loop again and you move forward in i so you come here you see it's actually smaller so you come here and you stop here right you stop at this element and you move forward in j so your j is currently here and it will stop here because this is smaller so j stops here and i stops here this is where they cross each other so after these two loops have finished in this iteration they've crossed each other so you come inside this if condition and you return j so you return this index j3 so what you have after returning you have all these smaller elements then 5 on the left side and all the greater elements than 5 on the right side right greater or equal to elements on the right side so that's what is ensured by Hoover's partition algorithm. So what you have before returning, you have all the elements on the left smaller than all the elements on right. In Hoover's partition, you may have smaller than or equal to elements on the left side, smaller than or equal to pivot and greater than or equal to elements on the right side, greater than or equal to pivot. After this is ensured, you return this index j right and you simply have to recursively call from here to here and then here to here one thing different from law muto partition in law muto partition we were picking a pivot and we were fixing the, that pivot at its correct position right and then left and right were greater and smaller respectively in horse partition, you pick the pivot as 5, but 5 is not at its correct position here, right? 5 is not at its correct position here. 5 has gone 
the right side right ideally five should have been just after four so this is where lomuto partition is slightly better it ensures that your pivot is at its correct place once your partition is done in hoover's partition only this thing is ensured that all the elements till j are smaller than or equal to pivot and all the elements on right of j are greater than or equal to pivot so this is an interesting point about hoover's and lomuto partition when we implement quick sort we'll see that in quick sort when we use hoover's partition we pass different parameters in the recursive calls and when we use lomuto partition we pass different parameters in recursive calls of quick sort why different parameters because lomuto partition it fixes it sorts one element right you don't have to sort that particular element but hoover's partition it does not guarantee that whatever pivot you have picked it would not it might not be at its correct position so you mainly do not fix any particular element in hoover's partition but in general hoover's partition takes less number of comparisons compared to lomuto partition and practically works much better than lomuto partition on average let us now talk about some corner cases how are these cases handled by hoover's partition let's consider this case when your pivot is smallest in hoover's partition you always consider array low as pivot right so this is a pivot and this is the smallest of all the four elements so what will happen you will begin i with minus 1 you will bring i equal to 0 and then you will check whether array i is smaller than pivot or not it's actually equal to pivot so you will stop here your first while loop will break your first do while loop will break you will begin with j equals to 4 here right so j will begin from at this position you will do j minus minus when will you stop when array j becomes smaller than or equal to pivot so you will come here you will come here you will come here you will not stop because all these are greater then you will come here and you will stop so i and j are in the first iteration i will become zero and j will also become zero right uh, in the first iteration itself and when i is greater than or equal to 0 you stop right and you return j so you will return 0 so your this list has all the elements which are smaller than this list right so your list is partitioned your array is partitioned into two halves and you have one list which is smaller right and that hoover's partition works let us now talk about this another corner case when your pivot is largest 12 is pivot here is the largest element among all the elements what you will do you will initialize i with minus 1 j as 4 right now you will continue incrementing i while array i is smaller than pivot so you will stop here right you will stop at i equal to 0 itself because this is greater than or equal to pivot this side you will stop here itself because this is smaller than pivot right so you stop at these two points you swap these two elements 9 comes here 12 comes here and after that you will again iterate in this loop and in this iteration you will increment i right you will come here because it's smaller than pivot you will come here it's smaller than pivot and then you will reach here because it's smaller than pivot right so you, your i stops here i becomes 3 and j j stops here itself because it's smaller than pivot but they cross each other so you will return j which means you will return index of this element and you can see that elements from l to j are smaller than elements from j plus 1 to h so you have partitioned the array let us now talk about third corner case when all the elements are same with this corner case we'll also understand that hoover's partition is not stable and that's one of the reasons your quick sort is not stable algorithm by default so what happens in case of equal elements your i is initially minus 1 and j is 4 so you have do while loops both will increment only once your i will stop at 0 and j will stop at 3 
because we have smaller and equal conditions, smaller and greater conditions in these two loops respectively. So after they have stopped at these two points, we swap these two elements and we again begin with the next iteration. The, in the next iteration, your two while loops, your two do while loops will again stop after just incrementing i and j, incrementing i by 1 and decrementing j by 1, right? So it will stop here and you will again do a swap, right? So after swapping, these two elements will be swapped and your i will become 2 and j will become 1. They will cross each other and you will return j. One thing, one important observation, it's not stable because you are swapping equal elements, you know, you're changing their positions. And something similar happens in Lomuto partition also. Lomuto partition is also not stable. But the naive partition that we talked about in the first video, that is stable because you create an auxiliary array and you first copy all the smaller elements. So while copying the smaller elements, you can just copy the smaller equal to elements on the left side, right? So that is stable because they are traversed in the same order and copied in the same order. So your naive partition, although it requires big O of an extra space, it does three traversals, but it is stable. That's the advantage this naive partition has over Lomuto partition and Hoer's partitions.